clearly what you're seeing is there is like an excitement and a euphoria post-election and everybody is really starting to get in there and putting that risk on rally. And when you look at like the S&P 500, for example, it is trading expensive, right? It trades about 22 times forward earnings, which is historically expensive. But as you've seen in history, markets can stay expensive for a while. So I don't think this is ending any time in the near future. I think, if anything, one thing that's keeping the markets from going higher is how much cash has been on the sidelines, which, interestingly enough, last week, more money went into cash. So those numbers actually get reported weekly. I think it'll be interesting to see what happens this week, to see a, like a full week post-election. Is money starting to make its way back into the markets? Because that's what ultimately will send things higher. I mean, you, you, it's funny. You say the word euphoria, which it, it's, it certainly felt like it. Mm -hmm. Nelson Peltz at Delivering Alpha used that same word today, in which he said, I don't think this rally continues. Trees don't grow to the sky. Definitely not uninterrupted. There will be something that will upset it. Now, he's really positive about the election outcome and what mm -hmm. it could mean for the economy and growth moving forward. But even he says, I mean, come on, it's like been a little crazy, right? Does it feel like it's been a little too much? You know, I wouldn't think so, but I think that's where you need to look at different sectors of the market. So all of the excitement has been around AI and the MAG7, and that's continuing to do well. And though I don't think that is going to end, that is where you want to look. So take, for example, the S&P 500, which when we invest here, we split this out over growth versus value rather than just blindly putting everything into the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. The growth side turned about 28 times at a P.E., which is well above its five-year average, whereas the value side, so these are things like banks and your cyclical sectors, which are arguably positioned better under a Trump administration, are only trading like 17 times earnings. So I don't think the rally is necessarily ending anytime in the short term, but with that new money to add, I think there's a lot of other areas of opportunity that still have room to run. Okay, you say banks. Um, mm -hmm. Deutsche Bank raised their price targets on almost every stock in their coverage universe. They didn't upgrade everything, mm -hmm. but they certainly raised their price targets on, on everything. Goldman Sachs, for example, goes to $575 instead of their old target of 500. There's a list on your screen here of the price target moves we had today at Deutsche. Mike Mayo, Wells Fargo, calls it a watershed inflection point for banks. Talking about 15 years of harsher regulation is now going to come to an end. Is this the spot, even with really big gains this year, that you need to zero in on more? Absolutely. And I think investors tend to be a little underinvested here. And I think there's a lot of things that are positioning nicely. The deregulation has been the big hot topic, which I think arguably is going to be a better boost for this industry as opposed to things like tax cuts, which is going to likely happen on the corporation standpoint. Um, but you're also seeing valuations are lower and also the yield curve is steepening, which is a better thing for these banks. So I think they have been a very underloved sector, but absolutely something that's going to perform well regardless of Trump being in, but with him being in, I think it actually just positions them better. I, I know you like emerging markets, okay? Mm -hmm. um, are you talking about China included in that, or are we thinking India and elsewhere? Because obviously we're worried about, you know, the impact of, of tariffs and the turn up of the, uh, of the ratchet on that. What do you think? Yeah, and I think that's where some of some of the concern with China, it's going to have a lot of political headline risk. And I think some of that is going to get oversold based off Trump's st stance on China. But I don't think this is something on a discount. So we own emerging markets exclusive, you know, the entire markets, including China. Mm -hmm. China is the one that has that headline risk. But when you look at this in the bigger picture, emerging markets like 85 percent of the world's population, 60 percent of global GDP, only 10 percent of the world's market cap, however. And U.S. investors only tend to have like 2% invested in there. So I'm not saying go all in. It tends to be oh, more sure. volatile. But that is one of those areas where if you're doing additional money you need to deploy, absolutely pick that up. It's got great value.